Howdy, folks. Three Sheets to the Mouse is an adult themed podcast that may contain content and language not suited for younger cowboys and cowgirls. Now then, hang on to them hats and glasses, because this here's the wildest podcast in the wilderness. <laughs> I'm sorted, but you'll be rewarded When at last I am given my dues And injustice deliciously squared Be free, free Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special quickie of Three Sheets of the Mouse. Trenton and I are sitting here drinking some beer. We wanted to come and talk to you about some uh, Disney parks, some Disney booze, and a little bit of debauchery in between. So sit back, relax, uh, grab a pint of beer with us, and enjoy this quickie of Three Sheets of the Mouse. So, Trenton, what are we drinking tonight? Both of us have beer tonight. Well, some people are worth melting for, Scott. What are you melting with? So this, I'm actually drinking a frozen barrel. It's a frozen barrel uh, Imperial Milk Stout. It's brewed by and brewed and canned by Southern Barrel Brewing in Bluffton, South Carolina. So this is a, a local brew. It's an it's an Imperial Milk Stout, and it's it. I'm I'm not gonna lie. It's a little boozy. It's a little um. It's a uh, malty. Multi? Yeah, it's a it's a left hand uh, left hand milk stout or a duck rabbit milk stout meets uh, Schlitz. It's 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 a little too boozy for me. I mean, I agree. I I appreciate that it's ten percent. It's getting the job done, but it's uh, you can taste that it's getting the job done. If you know what I mean. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really like left hand brewing. You don't like you don't I'm like not a big hand? F- oh, you're an idiot. I'm not a big fan of their stuff. Well, you're no. Dumb. I mean it's fine. No, I just to me their stuff was super like pungent. I mean I so I'm gonna be honest, I've only had left hand milk, left hand milk soap, and a left hand nitro. I see I've never had their stouts. I've only had uh I'm, this like hip hip hypnotic IPA. I've or never it had was. anything besides the, the, the milk stouts. Yeah, see, and maybe their IPA, to me, their IPA was too hoppy. It was, like, super, super hoppy, and, and it was, like... <sighs> that's, that's every IPA, though, dude. That's that's the new... Not not California IPAs, though. But you like, you heard the last time I talked about fucking the the new brewery IPA movement. It's That's that's what it is. It's the hoppiest, I know. the grossest, hey, look at me, <laughs> I can drink this. 125 IBU unit IPA. It's like no one fucking cares, dude. It's yeah. it's not good. I, and I think that's why I prefer more breweries like Kona Brewing Company, where they don't throw hops at you. Even their like even their Island IPA, uh, the Castaway IPA, is not overly. My hoppy. problem with Kona is at this point they've been purchased. They've been purchased for a number of years, right? But for like t- for like five years, six years, yeah, if that. Just, Actually, no longer no. than that. No, because when they when I the point the point is they they seem to lose their integrity, and you know what I mean. It's just like Terrapin, who makes beers in Disney. They make the the green IPA in in um, mm-hmm. Pandora, and they make the other the the Grog Ale. It's they they lose integrity, man. It's. It's rough. But that's every business. That's every business. It is, but, I mean... You, you make some bank and you, you you get a little big for your britches. See, and, and but here's the thing. With Kona, I feel like their beer is still good. They put out a good product. Yes, they are part owned, and I think it's like 25% owned by the Anheuser-Busch company. I think it's 75. Is it really? I, I, I know there, there are... They are owned by Anheuser Busch to a, to an extent, but their beer is still good. I love Hanalei. I love the new Kanaha. It's but that one is actually really good. It's an it's a golden ale with a little bit of mango juice in it. I love that a lot. 
It's not hoppy. It's crisp. It's cool. It is a great refreshing drink. Longboard lager is a favorite. No, I and I get it. I'm just saying that coming from the the brewery side of things, that you look at a lot of that, and it's it's very it's very frowned upon. It's very. I mean, it's 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 your mom and pop shop getting purchased by Walmart. Yeah, and and look. Oftentimes Walmart absorbs them and they just close them down. But these, at least with the brewing, the the craft brewing business, which most big uh, big brewers are now turning those around and saying, okay, we're going to have our own craft beer brand. Like Goose Island was a craft beer for a long time. That's owned by Nazar Bush. Goose Island also sucks dick. I like the 312. No, it's bad. No, it's not. Mm. It's not. It's a. It's a. It's a decent IPA that's not too hoppy. Coming from somebody that I mean, no offense. I'm not saying that I know more than you. I'm not saying in any sense that I know anybody, any anything more than anyone that's listening to this. But it's a very basic, shitty IPA. The thing about alcohol is you can never be wrong because it's all taste. No, based. I mean, no, and, no, I, and absolutely, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that I'm better or my palate's more refined or I know more than you or I know more than anybody else. But from my perspective, from what I know about beer and from being, you know, to the Cicerone level that I am, it's... And, and, and look, Trent, I could say the same about Scotch because you hated Arbit. Right. No, no, absolutely. And, 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 and like 90% of Scotch lovers think it's one of the best Scotches no, That's a, a hundred percent true. Ardbeg so, makes me want to die. No, I get it. <laughs> I, I, I get it because I remember the first time I tried Isla, it was intense. And you know what? I probably shouldn't have started you off with that because that is intense. But well, thanks a lot. Uh, Dick. Going from your <laughs> going from your local brewery to my, um, uh, I am drinking a Budweiser Freedom Reserve Red Lager. It uh, I, I'm not gonna lie. It's a good beer. It is a really good beer. And and I'll tell you what, I appreciate this beer for for three reasons really. One, I don't have a problem with Budweiser. I grew up uh, you know in the st louis area it's it was a common thing around the around the state um this this red lager is brewed using a recipe from george washington so it's a recipe that is on record at the new york public library uh dates back to 1757 um and it's it's a it's a red lager it's like an american amber ale and Budweiser did an amber ale a while ago that I thought was really good. And this one has this really, su- not overly sweet, but a nice barley malted hops um, and not overly hoppy taste to it. It's really good. So, but even better, even better, Trenton, this beer is exclusively made by U.S. veterans working for Budweiser. And then the profits of this beer go to folds of honor how much how much is it do we know all of them all of them the entire profit it's it's a limited run it's a very limited release it's no, probably only then I, agree. I think it's only for about six months but the profits of this are going to folds of honor and i cannot i cannot stress that is an amazing charity that does great work for our u.s veterans no but this uh it's a brand new beer it just came out a day ago I gotta say, it's it's really good, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of Fat Tire. It's got that like sweetness to the caramel notes, the the molasses in there. Um, I I appreciate it. I I definitely like it. I'll I'll definitely buy it from time to time over the summer, and because uh, you know George fucking Washington. George motherfucking Washington. Let's cross the Delaware right. and let's kick some fucking ass. Here comes the general. The general. A little Hamilton. Just long dick in it. A little Hamilton right, right there. So so what are we talking about, Scott? So tonight I wanted to uh, I wanted to surprise Trenton with a little bit of uh Pixar. We're gonna talk about Pixar. Huh. You haven't seen too many Pixar movies? I have, but Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna specifically talk about the music of Pixar. Because Pixar doesn't have a lot of you know, the big songs that everyone thinks of in Disney Renaissance or Disney Classic films. But I think they do. But they have some wonderful songs. So I wanted to go over, um, you know, maybe like a top five or let's just, well, maybe we won't even do top five, but we'll just start naming some of the songs we really love. Okay. 
So why don't you start us off? Give me a song that you really love. Uh, in no particular order? Yeah, no particular order. We'll just um, go back and forth. So this is one that plays on the Disney uh, Pandora that mm-hmm. is from Monsters, Inc. It's, uh, oh, it's, it's Mike and Sully singing... And I don't know the exact title of the song without you. If I didn't have you. If I didn't have you, yes. Yeah. If I and were gonna, rich, man. And by the way, Trenton, right now that's playing in the background in that jazz form. Yeah, it's a great song. It is. I, 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 you, the listeners will know I use that a lot on the backing tracks for what are you drinking or whenever we're just shitting the sh- shooting the shit like this. It's a great it's a song. It's a jazz. Song. Ver- there's a jazz version of it. Love that song. It's I mean, really good. So I'm a huge John Goodman fan. I've been a, a huge John Goodman fan since I was very young. I mean, Big Lebowski, Roseanne, um, you know, he, he's, you know, John, John Goodman's from St. Louis. Well, hopefully he doesn't drink Budweiser because that shit's nasty. But <laughs> don't look at me like that, Scott. Give me that. Give me that. Give, hey man. Give me that look again, Scott. Give me that little sexy look. John Goodman is 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 up there, and Billy Crystal really is one of those. I don't I don't really contribute Billy Crystal to being one of those. Um, blue. Oh, he's all time funny. But all-time he's not a blue collar actor, but. No, but he's all time funny. But Mike and Sully, that that combo is just. But and you know what? It's perfect because Mike Wazowski is kind of like that. Uh, I don't want to get my hands too dirty kind of guy. And jo- and Sully, John Goodman is like, yeah, you know what? I'll do whatever. I'll get John, dirty. J- John okay. Goodman is. <laughs> like I said, if if you've never seen the Big Lebowski with Walter Sobchak. Come on, yeah, mm-hmm. on. it's he's he's one of the best. No, he's he's great. He's so. What's your first one? Uh, so uh, my first one, a uh, little bit a uh, little bit unexpected, but it is uh, "Learn Me Right" from Brave. I love the song. It's sung. It's uh, the 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 music is made or is performed by Mumford and Sons, and the song is sung by a British artist called Birdie. Love the song. I think it's a wonderful message. It's got a great track. There's uh, bagpipes in it. There's uh, guitars. I I just love the folky. It just to me, it just it feels like you're riding through the Glen in Scotland. So and I, I mean, love I, it. I I get it, and, and I feel like I've mentioned this before on the show. My granddad, rest in peace, um, was from Scotland. He's from Rosside, Scotland. Um, so I grew up with that culture. I mean, my granddad was from Scotland. My grandmother's from England. I've been drinking Guinness since I was 14. I've got red hairs in my beard. I'm that UK blood. So that is one that, that definitely hits home, Scott. Yeah, I, I, I love it. Um. So uh, to me, it's it's just a great song, and I, I think the movie's underappreciated. It's underappreciated, and I think that people that don't like it, it's a lot like um, people that don't like Brave or people that like that don't like Seinfeld. You you just don't understand, so yeah. you don't appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So what's your what's your next? One? Um, this is gonna be a shout out to to Mikey actually. Uh, Life is a Highway from uh, Cars. I love that song. It's so fucking perfect for that movie. Yeah. And um, is that original for the for the movie? Is that an original song or is that I think a, it's a re-recording? I, I, think, I, it's a I think it's a re-recording for the movie by a yeah, different artist. It is. That's right. It's um it it is a cover song by Rascal Flatts, but I just think it's perfect for Dude, that. They they movie. crush right. it. And that that movie, and and I hadn't seen that movie up until a month ago, month and a half. No, I'm being honest. 
I'm I don't want I don't want the attitude from you. What? Yeah. That was the first time you yeah. saw that. That's twelve years ago. Yeah, twelve years ago. You know what I wanted? I was I was I wasn't worried about watching Pixar movies. I was worried about being in my fresh my high freshman school? year of high school. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, 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 but it was True. a great movie. It was kind of a culture shock, to be honest, to hear Owen Wilson's voice um, in a popular movie again. Yeah, I mean, in 2006, he was, he was, he was the guy. So, but but listening to it now, it's like, Owen, Owen Mm -hmm. Wilson. Oh, okay. Well, um, but um, that 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 song, I think, perfectly personifies that entire movie i mean that's that's a that's a good one yeah no i i definitely like it i'm gonna stay with you on here i'm gonna stay with cars on this one because this one wasn't uh it was in cars it's in the background during um uh during the movie but it is more prominently featured in uh mater in the ghost light which is a short that came after the movie and that's behind the clouds by brad paisley when you're feeling lonely, lost and let down, it seems like those dark skies are following you around. This is the perfect song for Radiator Springs. It's slow. It's kind of like, you know what? When when things are down, when when you're not feeling great, I'm here for you. Because there's always something right behind the clouds. There's a big blue sky waiting right behind the clouds. I love this song i don't i don't know if you've ever heard it but uh it's brad pay it's by brad paisley i've never seen that uh, no. it's an, yeah it's an original for the for the movie it was in the movie but in kind of like the background but it, it's really really good it's a wonderful song huh. it's a little country yeah, too sounds like brad paisley that would make sense yeah yeah all right so uh so what do you got uh, next? my next one is you got a friend in me classic randy newman you got a friend in me yeah it, it you know it's it's really good you got a friend in me you got a friend in me when the road looks rough ahead and your miles and miles from your nice warm bed. it's one of those songs that i feel like everyone knows the words Everyone's singing mm-hmm. along, and everyone knows the movie it's from. It, it, you hear that song, you immediately think of Woody and Buzz. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is that is such an iconic song. Um, the, from the first from the first notes that... Doo, 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 I mean, you just know what's coming on, and you, you, get, you get happy. It's happening. Yeah. And and I think I fe- I can't remember what show I featured this on, but when we were doing a what are you drinking? I did a for for Tim and Adam. I did a postmodern jukebox cover of this song featuring Elliot Yamin from American Idol, and it's really cool, definitely cool. So that's my um, that's my next one. What's your next one, Scott? Uh, I gotta go, Coco here. Uh, and I'm not going to go with everyone's going to say it, you know, remember me, great song. To me, I think Un Poco Loco is, is the best song of that movie. It's this fun, you know, crazy, crazy song that just gets you dancing. It gets you, you, you singing. Um, you make me un poco loco, un poquititito loco, the way you keep me guessing. I'm nodding and I'm guessing. I'll count it as a blessing that I'm only un poco loco. If you listen to the to the uh, bilingual version, I love the way it sounds. It's got a great, it translates really well into both Spanish and English. I think it's an amazing song. Ah. I, I've never seen Coco, so I. Oh I, my god! You I gotta know. see it. You it's, will it's, cry your ass off. I've been very busy. No, this is. Uh, I mean, this was a song written by the the director and writer for the movie, Adrian Molina. 
Um, Gael Garcia Bernal and Anthony Gonzalez both sing this incredibly well. I love, I love this song, and I love the entire soundtrack. I mean, there's so many I would mention uh, that that don't, you know. Remember me won for best song. They won an Oscar. That's that was always going to happen because when you see when you see that movie, you will understand why that movie or that song won for best song because it is such an emotional song. I mean, I would also say that Yaya Rona is is probably one of the most underrated songs of that entire movie. I mean, it's such it it's such a beautiful song. It is wonderfully sung. Uh, by by Angelica Valle. She's an amazing artist who just... I mean, you get the feels when she sings her heart out. Uh, uh, honestly, Coco killed it, man. Coco killed it. I'm just glad these aren't in order. Why? Because I get, I get, I just keep thinking. I just get more and more and more shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Keeps jumping in my head. Well, you know, it's like a playlist. So if you had this on a playlist, and that's a great idea. But if you had these on a playlist, you know, it'd be like, oh, that's a great song. Oh, that's a great song. You can't pick so, a number so one. So Scott. Really. So. Mm-hmm. The idea here is, so I'll send you five songs, you pick five songs, Mikey picks five songs. And maybe we make a Pixar playlist. Yeah. Maybe we could do that. Maybe for the listeners, we could do Our that. Favorites. For those who have Spotify, we can we can set up a Spotify playlist for uh, three sheets C- Pixar songs. Because my next would definitely be, um, Reindeer are better than people. Oh, but you can't because that's not Pixar. Yes, it is. No, it's not. That's Disney Animation, buddy. Oh my God! So we're 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 we're, <laughs> we're, we're really blurring line. We're really blurring lines here. No, we're not. That is nope. That is not a Pixar movie. Frozen is not a Pixar movie. Scott, I feel like it's it's kind of it's. I said I said I said you I, you know <sighs> Disney Animation has the big songs. Pixar doesn't generally have those I, big. Wait. P- so big songs. Is Moana? Nope, that's Disney what, Animation. But that's what I'm saying. But those are two... It's very blurred lines. No, it's it, not. It is. No, it's not. Pixar Pixar is not a music... Pixar movies are not a musical. Disney movies are a musical. Disney movies are a musical in film form. Mm. They're... Everybody, think of it. Think of it. You go to a musical... The story is told. Wait, to me. so so do you that want is what, Disney songs or Pixar songs? No, Pixar songs. Just Pixar. We're doing Pixar only. <sighs> I know. You're, you you're, you're making it way harder. I know. The, I I told you this is not an easy job. Huh? I mean, what 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 other movies are there? I mean, there's so Wally. Wally has some. I, I d- no, I, they're not I, original I hate songs. Wally. They're not original songs, but put on your Sunday nope, best. I don't. I don't want anything to do with Wally. Nope, I don't want anything to do with Wally. It's a great Gershwin song, though. Put on your Sunday clothes. It's from Hello Dolly. Nope. Let's let's keep talking. What other what other stuff can I choose from? Uh. Okay. So. Uh. Let's see here. Uh. Cars. Any of the Cars movies? Yeah. The the new have you seen the new Cars three? Nope. Okay, so uh, ZZ Ward and uh, who's the guitarist? Uh, Gary Gary Clark Jr. They did an amazing song that's played at the end called Ride. It is just the the guitar riffs on this are amazing. It just it just it makes you want to put your foot down, throw that pedal to the floor, and just drive as fast as you can and, and, you know, hit that bank turn at 250 or 200 miles an hour and then, you know, draft up on someone and then pass them. So, 
So, I feel like you're really you're really pigeonholing me here. Pixar. I mean, so the the Disney P- Pixar only. But the Dis- the every the, the, Dis- the, the, but Disney songs are Disney songs are easy. Oh, what's but the gr- Disney what, what's but, your favorite but Disney song? a lot of those are Disney Pixar collabs. I mean, it's not really fair. No, they have totally separate animation studios. Yes, Disney has gone on to the 3D animation because well, it's a lot cheaper. And they than own the Pixar, animation. yes. Yes. Yeah, it's all the so, same but, people. But but here's the thing. Disney movies are easy to pick songs because the entire movie is told through song. Like the songs are what drive the movie. With Pixar, it's not about the songs. It's all right, about the story. all right. Hi ho, then. Hi ho is the that's a Disney movie. Okay, that's a, that's Snow White. That is definitely a Disney movie. There's like four Pixar movies to choose from. Hold on. There's not that many good songs to choose from. I feel like you're you. Well, that's that's why it's hard. Uh, you know, look, it's not, the it's not, it's not that it's hard. Songs. It's that it's bullshit. No, it's not bullshit. I, I said let's pick let's pick the best Pixar songs. Let's show the listeners that hey, you can listen to the Pixar soundtrack and not just say, oh, let me just listen to Frozen and let it go, because it, you know that's easy. Right, but that's but, but according stuff. to you, that's not Pixar. No, it's not. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Let the listener find the good Pixar songs that that are that are there. Um. So, I mean. Bugs Life doesn't really have anything. Uh, another one from Toy Story. I will go sailing no more, and that's by Randy Newman. And that's that moment that no Buzz. That. B- not well. You, I mean, this is why we do the shows. We want to educate no the people. But well, that let's let's inform okay. them. Yes. It's a it's a great moment where Buzz, Buzz. Has has walked into uh, Sid's dad's den. He saw the TV commercial about Buzz Lightyear toys, and he's like, "Holy shit! I'm not a real space ranger." And the level of dejection on his face, this level of disappointment, and how he's lived his entire life thinking he's a real space ranger, and all of a sudden, I'm just a toy. All the things I thought I'd. All the brave things I've done Vanished like a snowflake With the rising of the sun And he tries to fly and that moment when he's falling down and he crashes and loses his arm and becomes Mrs. Nesbitt? It's emotional. That's like when you finally realize that childhood is a hell of a lot easier than it'll, uh, uh, being an adult. And I will go say no more. So, any, you got anything else? Ratatouille, uh, Toy Story 3. What is Ratatouille? Ratatouille doesn't have any songs that are worth mentioning. No, those are more those are more um, original music. Michael Giancino, he is the he's the guy that does a lot of the um, the scores. So he does the score for Cars. Uh, he did the score for Wally or not Wally um, Up, Ratatouille, uh, Incredibles, um, Planes. I know that's not Pixar, but he did Planes. He did the score for Coco. Um, Randy Newman did did some of the other stu- did a lot of the other stuff. He did the Toy Story movies, some of the car stuff. Finding Nemo, that actually that's a good one. Finding Nemo, the end, the end uh, of the movie when they do Beyond the Sea, the Bobby the Bobby Darren uh, song. I love that song. This nice nice jazzy. Uh, somewhere beyond the sea. I love that song. Always been one of my somewhere favorites, even as a kid. Waiting for me. My lover stands on golden sands and watches the ships that go sailing. Even as a even as a kid, that was one so, of my favorite songs. So, but the problem songs. is that Pixar doesn't have a lot of those numbers, and that's why it's so hard to think of. 
But the, but the ones they hard, nail, but... they nail hard. Oh, they do. Absolutely. Um, Inside Out. I never, there is I've never, one I've never song I. Th- oh, dude, it's it, it is just an emotional fucking. See, I don't wreck. want that. You gotta you gotta watch it. It's an emotional wreck. The Bing Bong song is pretty good. I love the Bing Bong song. You'll so have to Scott, watch it. You'll have to you'll have to watch that one. I'm gonna ask yep. you a question. Mm-hmm. Top three resorts that you would stay in from three to one. Three being the least you want to, number one being the one you most want to, whether you say they're not in Disney World. Wait, what? So the the top three resorts you'd want to stay in. Okay, so three is the one I don't want no, to stay in. I don't want to stay It's not that you don't want to. It's that, that, that. No, no, I actually. No, I like this. I like this. One I don't want to stay in. One I would. One I would. Uh, kind of like to stay in. One I, one I would that book you would right settle now. In. And then. And then one my one that my dream. Sense. That's not what I was asking, but okay. sure. All right. So one um, I would not want to stay in. Be, be, uh, be prepared for an argument, though. Um, I would probably say Caribbean Beach. I I've stayed there twice. It's too big I, I I don't I don't think I'd ever stay That's there not again. what I thought you would say but um, I I agree with you 100 percent well you think I'm this bougie guy that'd be like I'm not staying but anything but the dirt. Well, no but, but I, when, I when like we the were there and just a couple weeks ago it was um we, we walked there a couple times out of Epcot to was it Caribbean Beach or Beach Club maybe not Beach, beach club, beach club. You okay, so maybe that. not what I'm talking about, but I've I've seen the the layout. I I, I feel like I agree with what you're talking about. It's it's not. It's, it's massive, not man. Homey. It it's really not is big. Homey. No, and here's the thing. Look, the rooms are, the rooms are all very spread out, and there's only there's only five bus stops throughout the entire resort. Now they upgraded a bunch of rooms to be pirate themed rooms. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean, fine, but they put those all the way at the back end of the resort, which is almost a, qu- a three quarters of a mile walk to the main lobby. So if you want to go get a, a, a bite to eat, at, at, you know, after hours, you have to walk almost three quarters of a mile. Now, the t- the two times we stayed there, we stayed one in Jamaica and two in Aruba. And those are really close to the main resort, and that's fine. But if you stay anywhere other than those two, maybe Martinique is not too far away. But if you stay in anywhere else, you know, Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, or um, or any of those those three areas, because Trinidad, Trinidad North, Trin- Tobago South, whatever it is, those three are so far away. So this is the place that you would maybe stay. What's the place you would never stay? No, that's the place I would probably never stay. I would never stay oh, at again. Okay. So what's the place you? Maybe stay. What's the place at- you would maybe stay if you you had a choice that you you've never stayed. Maybe you've never been there. Maybe you want to try it out. Uh, uh Wilderness Lodge. That's one I would. I would. I would. If if you gave me the option and said, "Hey, go book a resort," and he, you know you have the money to do it right now, go book a resort for your stay next week. Wilderness Lodge. I want to stay there so bad. Okay. So what's what's your one? I would definitely book there right now. Um, my, my dream, uh, my dream resort would be, uh, uh, Grand Flow. I've never stayed at the Grand Floridian. Um, I love the architecture. I love the, the periodness of it, that, uh, 1920s, 30s, old Florida. Well, you're um, bougie as fuck, so that makes sense. N- well, no, no, it's no, just that no, I like, no, it makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah, I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, look, everybody knows me. I like jazz. I like old stuff. I'm an old soul. I enjoy, you know, the the design from the Flagler design. Um, this old, like, Florida, this, uh, you know, this St. Augustine kind of feel to it. I, I love it. That's that's my number one. All right. So what's your number three that you would never stay um, at? I would never stay at. Huh. 
My 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 never would stay yet is uh ugh, this is hard. So it's hard because I'm poor and I would stay at a lot of these <laughs> these resorts. Um I mean truth be told I'll pr- I'd probably stay at anyone, but if I'm going to book if I'm going to pay for it, I would definitely like if, I said, if I'm going to if I'm going to pay for- full money again and and this sounds terrible because mm-hmm. I was just there, I would never pay full money to stay at the Poly ever again. Look, it's expensive. It, it was expensive, but I meaning it's it, it it is expensive. I'm not going to say it was expensive. It 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 it's very expensive to stay there. It was very loud. Um, I heard everything everyone around me was doing. I heard everything the the carts outside that were carrying the towels. I heard all of that. Um, I heard the ferries, and I didn't even have a, a lake view. I mean. I, I don't think I I would never personally spend the money to stay there. I I definitely want to stay there, and you know now that we have DVC, maybe on one of the off times, January, February, September, October, that will happen. You know, one of the one of the lesser priced point times. Because I do want to stay there. It's just I've, I've walked through the lot. I've walked through the resort. It's beautiful. It's 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 a great resort aesthetically, but when you start hearing things ugh You got to remember there are there are kids at Disney. And sleeping, you know, sleeping past 9 a.m. most most families and kids are up early. No, I get that. You know, because the kids are in bed by 9, 30, 10 o'clock at Disney. So my, um... Or the little kids, I said. All right, so you're number two. What, what would you book right now? If I could, if I had the money, would definitely be the, um... The Copper Creek Cabins. <laughs> Wait, I'm bougie? You said if I could. I'm bougie? You said if I could. <laughs> No, actually, so <laughs> t- to be honest, that was that was more of a joke. Um, I would say the boardwalk. The boardwalk seems like we we did a um this past week we were there, and we we met with a DVZ a DVC representative, and um, mm-hmm. she's like, well, I can't sell you points here, and it was on the boardwalk, but you can have a blah 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 meeting at Polynesian blah blah blah, so. At the, the the boardwalk though, that walkthrough was the perfect representation between what I think is bad theming and good theming, if that makes sense. So the Polly and the Animal Kingdom Lodge are both dark and yeah, dark woods. It's dark and you know, and homey, intimate, intimate. But but I've stayed at the Bay Lake and that's very white and marble and glass and clean it's contemporary um the boardwalk was the the good intermediate i in in my I love, opinion i i loved it i love my stay there we we stayed there last april um we had a pool view it was a it was a wonderful resort and you know part of it is that you know we come from new jersey and the boardwalk is an excellent representation of of New Jersey, you know, <laughs> sea, you know, seacoast life. It really, it Booty really is. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, it, 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 you know, that whole like um, kitschy atmosphere. There, there's a lot of New Jersey ish stuff in the boardwalk, and I, I, I appreciated that. In fact, when you when you're in the lobby, there's the fireplace with the two creepy chairs. Go ahead. I'm just, I'm getting there. Okay, all right. Um, there's the, you know, you know, in the lobby, there's those two creepy right. chairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, above that is a statue of Lucy the elephant, and that was an old hotel uh, just outside of Atlantic City that uh, that you could stay in. It was an elephant shaped hotel. So I, I love the boardwalk. No, I, and, I would and, definitely and that's stay there. one that I wish 
I would buy DVC right now if I could buy at the boardwalk. Yeah, the problem is that any resale contract is like a 25-year contract. So, all right. So, uh, so Trenton, a uh, couple things. Let's uh, ra- let's wrap this up because you know we don't want to turn this into more full length right. episodes. Uh, let's give the people a quickie here. So, Trenton, what's the best way for them for for our listeners to help other people find the show on iTunes? So, you go on iTunes, you search three the number three sheets to the mouse. You find us. You give us a review, hopefully five stars. If not, you know, let us know what we're doing wrong. If you don't like it. Let us know. Uh, we we might not like what you have to say, but we, we, but we'll take it as constructive right, criticism. Absolutely. Um, but but go on there. Go on iTunes. Give us a five star review. Tell us tell us what we're doing right. Let let your friends know. the The more reviews, the the more the more uh, you let us you know g- g- give your opinion on us. The more other people know that they want to listen to us. Build our family, build our ohana. So, yeah, share the show. If you're listening to the show, you know there's a there's an easy button when you when you're on your uh, when you're on your app. There's an easy three dots at the bottom right corner on your podcast app. Hit that. Hit share episode. Share it to your Facebook. Share it to your Instagram. Share it to your Twitter. That's the best way for other Disney fans like yourself to find the show. Uh, make sure you subscribe and download. That's the best way for us to kind of be known more in the Disney podcast community. The more downloads we get, the more people will see us on iTunes and the more sheeters we'll have. And, and what's better than more family, right? Yeah. No more Ohana, mo better. So if you want to be a part of that Ohana, head over to facebook.com slash group slash three sheets. That's the best way to become part of the three sheets nation. There you can share your in park pictures, share how you keep a Disney home. And, and most importantly, Keep it Disney on the page. We had a lot of fun today uh, as we're recording this. We had some great posts from uh, from Trenton about uh, thinking about the worst cues in Disney World. Uh, there's a bunch of Disney After Dark photos. But most importantly, there was a lot of throwback Thursday photos today. We, start, we kind of started a thing. So maybe Thursdays will be our throwback Thursdays where people can share their, uh, share their throwback pictures. Trenton, I saw a photo of Magic Kingdom without a partner statue today. It, 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 Can you it imagine that? It hurts my heart. I know it's so weird, right? Yeah, I mean, if you- look out for that. Look out for Trent's polls. Look out for our, our wonderful threads. Keep it Disney on the Facebook page. We love we love when uh, when you post your in park pictures. Post what you're doing at home. How you keep it Disney at home. Um, we're over at uh, we're over at Instagram. Instagram at Three Sheets Podcast. Twitter at Three Sheets Podcast. Tag us. Tag us in your uh, photos in the parks. That's hashtag Three Sheets Nation. Um, make that a thing. But uh, just come and hang out with us. It's a lot of fun. Hey, Scott, give them your closing remarks. So uh, I like doing these little quick shows. Uh, they're fun. It's a way for us to kind of put out an extra show for you guys, the listeners. It seems like you guys like them. We get, we get a lot of comments on them. And it's just it's just fun to talk to you once more per week. And whoever's on the show for these quickies, whenever we sit down and do them, whether we're just sitting here drinking together, it's it's a lot we're of fun. Al- we're always drinking you? together. Yeah. No. No. No, no. Absolutely. It's um. It's a great place for me to promote my poll. Um. Come on over. Talk to us. Have you listened to the show? Come to Three Sheets or uh, Facebook.com slash group slash Three Sheets. So come on over. And I know you're listening. I know you're listening to the show. You're not on the Facebook page because you got more listeners than we do Facebook members. Come on. Come on. Download twice, listen yeah. once. Download all that shit. Yeah. So from all of us here at Three Sheets of the Mouse, thank you for making our show part of your Disney life. Thank you for your time, this time, and until next time, so long for just a while. And thank you!